Hey guys and welcome back to another video. Today I'll be showing you how to update your rooted or modded Nexus 6P to the latest and greatest version of Android O, which is the OPR5 build of Android Oreo, just released pretty much today. So I'll be showing you a way to do this that includes using the given flash all script, except we're going to change a few things. So this way uh, we get to be exposed to more unique ways of updating our device rather than the old extract everything and flash it through fastboot or using flashfire. So yeah, let's uh, dive right into this. As always, uh, you can choose any way you like to update your phone. I'm just showing you another way as requested by someone else. So if you are more comfortable using flashfire or flashing things through fastboot and the bootloader and individually, then that's fine as well. So, but today we'll be using the flash all script and all that kind of good stuff. So let's get started. So currently my phone here is just rooted with Magisk Manager. You can see it works and we are rooted and everything is working fine so yeah we can now get on with the computer stuff so let's go over to our computer here and basically for Windows users first thing you want to do is make sure you have the Google USB drivers installed now on this version of Windows 10 and perhaps older version of Windows um, it will actually install this Lee Mobile bootloader and ADB Android user interface or Android interface and so you don't actually need to install any additional drivers so we're kinda of going towards like the Linux and Mac users out there that don't actually need to install drivers as well so just download this just in case we're gonna go through the same steps and we'll double check to see if we need to install these drivers so for Windows users download this USB driver here just click on this blue download link here and once you got that downloaded you also want to download the SDK platform tools now this is just ADB and fastboot and a couple of other files and this is what we will need to uh, for our computer to communicate with our phone so if you already have this installed or downloaded somewhere because obviously you've rooted your phone before and that's why I guess you're here and you should already have your platform tools set up from the first time or the last time you rooted or decided to flash something on your phone now this is just fastboot and ADB any version will do just make sure you have the latest one which is usually a good thing so if you don't have the latest one you can download the latest one from here just choose the one that is for your platform I want to download the Windows one you just click on it another window comes up agree to the terms and conditions and press the blue button I've already downloaded that so I'm going to skip this but if you don't have the platform tools already so and you'll need to download this next up of course is the factory image for our Nexus device we're going to click on the blue acknowledge button here to agree with the terms and conditions after that we can click on Angular for Nexus 6P on the right hand side and then let's scroll all the way down to the bottom and we have our latest build here which is the OPR5.007 so I'm going to click on the download link here this is the October factory image so I already have that downloaded as well so next up in our way of doing this we're going to need the latest version of TWRP only because I don't like to delete or modify things from the uh, what would you say the factory image files because I don't want to extract them again but I'll show you I guess two different ways of kind of doing this so it's great to make sure your TWRP is up to date anyhow so we can want to scroll down and download the latest version of TWRP and then click on this the latest one and then click on this middle the biggest one which downloads the image file and not the MD5 or the ASC for it now once you have TWRP downloaded uh, next up you want to download the latest version of Magisk or even SuperSU if you're using that but I think uh, we probably want to move over to Magisk but really it just depends on your own personal preference I, just, I think this is uh, just fine for me so you want to go down download the latest version of Magisk alternatively if you're using SuperSU you can download the latest one from downloads.chainfire.eu forward slash SuperSU if it's not downloads, then it's download. Now this will redirect you to the latest version of SuperSU available for download. I believe this has been updated recently, so make sure you get the latest version here. Now once we've got everything downloaded that you need, I have it in this very um, easy to access folder. I have the latest USB drivers for Windows only. I have the platform tools, latest one from the Google website. I have TWRP 3.1.1, which is just the latest image. 
You don't need to copy exactly what I'm doing here in case you're watching this from the future. Just download the latest one and of course download the latest version of Magisk and you're probably right, I am missing something from the folder here and that is in fact my factory image. So, so once everything is downloaded to your folder where you can access everything quite easily, we're going to go through a couple of things here now, things that we need to extract. So first up of course is the latest version of the platform tools, but I think we should do the factory image first just so we can get all the files that we need. So of course um, out of the archive here we'll need to get the bootloader image, the radio image, the image.zip and of course our flash or dot bat. Okay, so we've got everything extracted now. Now it looks a bit messy, I guess. You can close that factory image folder. Now this is the two ways I'm going to go about doing this. First off, if you don't mind having a little bit of a tainted image uh, zip file, so the one we've extracted here, it's actually quite hard to see, but the image-angler-opr5 or whatever build number. So if we open that up, this one contains your boot, recovery system, and vendor images. So if you want to keep TWRP without reflashing it again to make this a little bit more, I guess, streamlined or easier, you can actually delete the recovery image from within the images zip file here. So if I just go ahead and do this, I'm going to delete it. Alrighty, so the recovery image, the stock one, has been removed from the archive. So that means when we use the update command or the flash or bat, you'll actually be able to well, not have to flash TWRP again and just boot straight into it. So you can do it that way or you can leave that stock recovery image there and just flash TWRP afterwards, which I'll show you how to do anyway. Uh, very simple. So uh, we can actually edit all that into the flash all bat as well, which is uh, quite neat. So I might do that now, but <laughs> I guess before we do that, there's a few more things we're going to need to do. First off, you're going to want to copy this latest version of Magisk, the zip file, to your phone so you can flash it in TWRP. Alternatively, you can sideload it as well if that's your thing, which, uh, you know, what the heck, we'll, we're going to do that. And now we're going to extract our platform tools. Now you're going to open the up, up the zip file here, you're going to open up the platform tools folder, and then you want to extract these five files. You want to extract your ADB EXE, your two DLLs underneath it, ADB Win API DLL and the ADB Win USB API DLL, your Fastboot executable, and then your Lib Win P Thread Dash One DLL as well. Very important. So we're going to extract those four into the same directory as everything else, and we can close this window. Now, next up, we're going to now, I guess, reboot our phone into the bootloader and see if our drivers are working or installed correctly. So to do that, we're going to go back to our phone here. We're going to power off our device. I'm going to unplug the USB cable before it turns off, just so it doesn't go into that battery charging screen. Now when your device is off, all you have to do is press the volume and power down, I mean the power button and volume down button at the same time until you get into the bootloader. There we are. Once you're in the bootloader, plug in your USB and hopefully your computer should shall detect it. Now let's hop, hop over back to our computer here. Now if I go to the I'll right click on the start menu and go to device manager or you could just open it up however which way you like. Now if we open this up we should be able to see our device connected as an Android device somewhere. If not um, try replugging it back in to the computer I know it's definitely something with you know virtual machines and all that. And let's see, there we are. It's under the Lee Mobile Android device. So and you can see the Android bootloader interface installed here. So if you got this already on your computer, it should be fine. Last time I did a rooting tutorial with the same drivers and it worked okay. So we'll leave that be. If you actually see an unidentified device, what you want to do is right click on it and then click on update driver. And this is where you want to extract your Win USB drivers or your USB drivers windows, just the whole folder, just out like that. You want to close it, and inside has all these INF and catalog files, right? And then you want to hit browse my computer, locate to wherever it is, so that is the correct folder. 
don't select one of these folders, select the base USB underscore driver folder and hit next and it should say, um, well it should install the device but in this case since I already have the, the what Windows perceives to be the best drivers for my device already installed it's going to ignore these ones. So that is if you don't have them installed already. But otherwise if you have this, this is fine. Or if your drivers have been installed previously, that is also fine. So I guess now is the time we're going to bring up our, I guess, flash or zip file, uh, no, bat file here, our batch script. I was about to say bring up the command prompt, but we don't really need that, do we? So here we are, we have our flash all script. Now this is always great to have a look at, um, so let's get started. I guess this is what this is, is adding the system32 to the path environment variable, or at least putting in it in its local scope in case you have your ADB files there. Uh, but if you set up your platform tools in another way, it should probably work just as fine without extracting the ADB files here. So what we want to do is you want to keep the bootloader flashing, you want to keep the reboot bootloader, you want to keep the weights as well, and you also want to keep these two here. The thing we want to change is the last or the fourth last line, and that is the fastboot dash w update line. You want to remove dash w unless you want to wipe your phone entirely, including internal storage. And this is the keyword you want to put in. You want to put in double dash and then type in the word skip, skip dash reboot, like that. So we, our phone won't reboot automatically once it's done issuing the update command. You want to save the batch file and you want to close this. And if you want to flash TWRP as well, we can go back and edit the flash file, sorry, the batch file, and we can add this one line, fastboot, flash, recovery, and then type in the name of our TWRP image, which is this. I'm going to copy it, just so we don't get it wrong. Okay, why is this up here? Okay, so you're going to see this new line that you can optionally add to flash TWRP automatically for us. Uh, while it, it does its script. So we're going to save this and then we're going to run it and we'll hope for the best. So run the flash or batch file. And you can see it, it's going straight into work already. It's going to flash the bootloader. It's going to flash the radio and then reboot our phone. And now it's going to do the update. So in this update zip I've actually removed the recovery image that you've seen me delete earlier on. This is of course optional and of course that last line that we've added to the batch script here is also optional where we flash the recovery image. Uh, that is especially if you don't plan on deleting the recovery image from the images zip file from the factory image. But otherwise um, you can just do it again if you want to update your custom recovery as well. And once this is done, what the well the phone will do will stay in the bootloader, and we're going to manually reboot it back into TWRP for us to flash or sideload the latest version of Magisk. So I'll show you how to sideload it. But if you already have it on your phone, you might as well just tap on install, find and locate the Magisk zip file, and then install that. So I'm going to wait for this to push and flash the system images, and. I'll fast forward this until we're done. Okay, so the script has finished and you can actually see the last few lines where it says sending recovery and it has completed. That means it has flashed the TWRP image on our phone. So what we need to do now is head over to our phone and press down until you can see recovery mode up here and then press the power button for our phone to reboot into TWRP. So I guess that is not finished from outside on the computer. You can close the batch file that you've opened up in Notepad. What we need to do is open up our command prompt window, finally. And this is where we want to flash the, or sideload the Magisk zip file. This is if you don't have it on your phone. So of course you need to decrypt your data partition, which mine is four zeros. Once you've got that down, we can swipe to allow modifications. Doesn't really matter, as we're going to be rooting it using Magisk anyway. So, to sideload things in TWRP, you need to go to Advanced, and then ADB Sideload, and then start to uh, swipe to start sideload. 
Once that is done, we can go onto our command prompt window and type in ADB devices. And that will start up the daemon and then see if our device is in the side load function. I guess it's uh, not, so I'm going to try to replug the USB cable. And then I'm going to issue the command again. There we are, we're in the side load. Well, the computer has detected our phone in the side load menu. So once that is done, we can do the AB side load command. Leave a space in the end here and just drag in our magisk zip file onto the command prompt window. Hit enter. And you can see it's going to side load the package here. Now it's uh, backing up the stock boot image. You can see that's just on 79%. And after that, you can see it's done. Now, of course, you can normally just go into the install menu up here, locate it, and flash it like that. But in this case, we just sideloaded it just to reduce the amount of things we have to do on our phone, I guess. Now, after that, tap on reboot and then reboot system. Or you could type in ADB space reboot to reboot your phone back into Android. So I'm going to fast forward this step until we get into Android and we'll see that we're on the latest version and still rooted. And of course, you'd still have any mods that you, or you'd want to flash any mods that you had on previously and the ones that you want to keep. So for example, you had the pixel mod and you want it, you want to keep it, you probably want to flash it again since we've replaced the modified system with the stock one. So again, I'm going to let this fast forward and see you on the other side. Okay, so our phone actually booted up really quickly. You can see that it was finishing the installation up there. But let's have a look at Magisk Manager. And as we can see, we'll just open it up again. You can see we're rooted and still working just fine. We can check the safety net status again. And you'll see that that is also working quite well. Um, I, don't know, I don't really have any other apps to show you. Yeah, maybe the Explorer. We'll go look at our root storage can see that we can still we still have root access which is fantastic and if we just quickly look at the settings here go to system about phone you can see we're on the op5 opr5 build number here while rooted and of course you can keep any mods that you had just make sure they're up to date with or compatible with the latest version of android here just so you don't run into any issues here but if you do just flash the stock system image and you should be fine so thanks for watching guys, this is just another way of updating your phone using a mix or mostly the command prompt here on your computer without needing to extract too many images and all that. So thanks for watching guys, and as always, happy flashing.